My name's Anita Dare. I am a Canadian children's book author living in Winnipeg, Manitoba now, but I've spent a good portion of my life moving around and it has affected my journey as a person and my journey as a writer. And it's my writer's journey I would like to share with you today. So I began life in Summerside PEI, a military base. And when I was five years old, I uh, started moving with my family. Uh, my mother and father were both with the military, and then later on my father uh, joined Canada's aviation industry, and that kept us moving around. I adored moving to new communities. I found it exciting that I would have a new bedroom and it would look different and everything was always fresh and new. I found communities so interesting to explore, especially some of the communities we went to. But I think there was a side effect. You know, apart from it allowing me an opportunity to really discover a lot of interesting things about the history of an area and, and people, it also meant that I became quite shy. I mean, it's, it's hard always changing schools and, and trying to introduce yourself to new people. So I was not only shy, I think I was the very definition of painfully shy. I mean, I was one of those girls when I was an adolescent and a teenager. If, if a boy just looked at me or, or asked me if I had a pencil, I would blush beat red and then knowing that I was blushing because you can feel that those of you who are who are shy like like I was and, and still am we can tell when we're blushing and blushing is embarrassing and so I just would feel myself getting redder and redder and redder and I just thought oh so I was not only shy but I was shy about being shy so I'm pretty sure that makes it painfully shy but like I say, there was, there was benefits. I mean, we moved from Summerside, Prince Edward Island, to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, to Churchill, Manitoba, then a few other places in Manitoba, Brandon and Winnipeg. We lived in Baker Lake, Nunavut, but at the time, because it was a long time ago, it was still the Northwest Territory. So check that out in your history. Uh, as an adult, I, I kept moving as well because I ended up getting into the aviation industry, but maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I'd, I'd like to talk about when I moved from Moose Jaw to, um, well, not to Churchill so much, when I moved from um, Brandon, <laughs> I'm gonna get this all mixed up now, to Baker Lake. This was a small, arctic, isolated hamlet. And it was, it was not only going to a new school but also becoming absorbed and, and involved with a new culture. It was uh, an Inuit community and um, I ended up having a best friend I remember, uh, Sally Anguyuak, who became Sally Ayuak later on in life but you know she taught me a lot there but before I started making friends hmm, I remember my first day of school. It was cold it was snowy, it was September, but there was snow on the ground and the wind was blowing. And I remember we had to go outside for recess and I could see kids were playing Red Rover and, and whatnot, but I was too shy to go over and introduce myself. So, so I huddled up next to the school with my hood up and my park on and I was just crouched, you know, on my haunches, just leaning up beside the school. And I remember a kid went wandering by and yelled, Kinelvi! And I thought, Oh, he's calling me names. I learned later that he was actually saying, what's your name? <laughs> but I was just so shy. I, mean, I would spend spare time in, in the library just reading every book that was of interest to me uh, to the point that I ran out of books in the library. I mean, it wasn't a big library. I mean, I didn't read every book, but I, I, mean, I read I read fables. I read legends. I read animal stories. I read adventures. Um, I mean, I pretty much, I really loved fiction. And so when I kind of ran out of all the age appropriate books, teachers started bringing me books from their own collection. Books for me took me away. They took me away from my self-consciousness and my shyness and, and they opened up the world. I mean, keep in mind again, this was a long time ago. There was no internet. There was only 
two channels on, on the television. So I didn't have a lot of exposure to the outside world except through books. And they took me everywhere. And I started writing. I had a, a wonderful teacher, Mr. McDonald, who gave us so many really interesting creative writing exercises that, that just really got my imagination going, like showing us a black and white photo and saying, write a story about it, playing a film without the sound, a short film, write a story, what's going on there, playing us music, thinking, what, what does that make you think of? Maybe write a poem or a story or, or something. And I started writing and I enjoyed it. I had fun. And I read these books in the library and I s crossed my mind. I wonder if one day I could write stories that other people would read. Except to me, writers were like, like heroes or superstars or, or movie stars that lived on some man, lived in a mansion on some hill <laughs> near Hollywood. I don't know. They were equivalent with kings and queens and fairy tales. And I wasn't that. And I didn't see myself ever being that. I thought I could never be so important as to write a story that somebody would want to read. So I talked myself out of it. I mean, I, I had never met an author. This isolated community back when I was a little girl, uh, not even in just that community, but any community I went to, I, there were no visiting authors. I didn't know that authors were people who lived on your street, who, who drove the school bus, who worked in the restaurant or the supermarket, or were your doctors or, or teachers or anybody else. Like, there were moms or dads, brothers or sisters. I didn't know that writers were regular people with a curiosity and just a desire to write. So I talked myself out of it. And it took a lot of years. I ended up in a career in aviation and my husband was also in aviation. And so when, when we had babies and we were working shift work, it was really hard on our babies. So I took first a, a leave of absence uh, so that they wouldn't have the five different sets of caregivers that they did. And then eventually as we kept moving, I left that job. And I thought, well, if, I'm, if I don't have this aviation career, who am I? Yeah, I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. These, these are really important things. But, but who else am I? And, and then I remembered. I remembered that I always loved stories and I always wanted to write stories. But by this time, you know how forgetful adults are? Me too. I forgot that I used to talk myself out of it. I forgot that little voice that said, you can't do it. And I changed it. I changed that little mantra from you can't to you can. Of course you can. Of course I will write stories and one day they will be published because I know it's a long road, but I don't care. I'm just gonna keep writing and I know that one day I will be published. And so I started writing. I started writing picture books and then adventure stories. And I met, I met other authors along the way. I, I would help them. I would volunteer at events just to, to talk to writers. I would drive them around to their different schools and libraries. And I remember one, one writer that I met, she wrote children's books and that's what I wanted to write. She said, for children's books, it takes about seven years from the time that you start writing with the intent to be published to the time that you have a contract or are published. So, you know, take some time. Don't be in a rush. Just keep doing your thing. And so I did. I'd write my stories. I'd send them off. They'd come back from the publisher with a rejection. I'd adjust it, send it off to another publisher. And I'd write another story and send that off. And eventually, the letters that started coming back to me became more personal, wishing me luck. And then, when I was living in Yellowknife, we had moved from Lorange, Saskatchewan to Yellowknife. Sure enough, I received a contract for my first book. Now, the book that I wrote was actually set in the community that I had just left. That was Lorange, Saskatchewan. And when I was living in Lorange, a huge forest fire went through. It was called the Mallard Fire. You can look it up. 1999. The Mallard Fire, May 1999. 
And so this fire was still very much in my mind when we moved to Yellowknife and from the forest of northern Saskatchewan to the top of a rocky hill in Yellowknife. And so I wrote, Flight from Big Tangle, set in northern Saskatchewan. And you can see from the airplane on it, you know, I said I was working in aviation. You know how they say, write what you know? That's partially true. I would say, write what you're interested in. Because what you know is more than you might expect. Yeah, I knew a little something about airplanes, but there was a whole lot that I could research and figure out. But the real truth, the truths that I think can really carry through no matter what we're interested in writing, are the truths that are on the inside. The truths of how it feels to be afraid, how it feels to be joyful or sad. These are things that we all know. And so any story you want to write, as long as you keep those things, those truthful things, you can write anything. You can look up the details for anything. You can learn new things. I mean, that's one of the really fun things about writing. So I followed up that first book with the next book, Flight from Bear Canyon. Now in this one, my main character went from northern Saskatchewan <laughs> To the Nahani River Valley region of the Northwest Territories and so I was I was living up there and I went there I flew into that very special area and I wrote a book that was set there after this book I was so interested in a secondary character I, I included her the secondary character the friend in this book was named Jazz and so I decided she needed a series of her own and so then I wrote these junior Canadian ranger stories junior Canadian rangers are a real organization in, in Canada's northern northern areas, uh, remote communities. And uh, so this was sort of like cad cadets, but different. Again, you can look it up if you're interested or take a look at uh, the notes in one of these books and I explain it. So Racing for Diamonds starts out in Yellowknife and then moves up a little further north to the Norman Wells area. And after that, there was a second book. This is in the same series on the, nope, this one. Uh, poachers in the Pingos, where they go up to Tuktoyaktak in, in Nunavut. And then after that, On the Trail of the Bushmen, which is set in the Yukon Territory. So by this time, I had moved from Yellowknife to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, northern Ontario, but much further south. Oh, I missed Yellowknife so much. And so I ended up writing a story about a girl who moved from Sault Ste. Marie to Yellowknife. I just made that backwards, and it was... This is a teen novel called Spider's Song. But time was moving on. And by the time I finished this and got it right, it was, it was now like three or four years after I had moved from Yellowknife. And the North will always stay with me in many ways, but I'm not there. And so I started feeling like I had lost my, my truth of what it felt like to walk and feel the air in, in that community. So when we moved to Winnipeg, I started writing books that were set in this area. Two Foot Punch is a teen sports novel set in Winnipeg's historic exchange district. Two Foot Punch, uh, that's a term for parkour. For You may have heard of that. When I wrote this book, there was not a whole lot of knowledge of parkour and, and free running. And so I had to do a lot of research. I was always a runner but I had never done parkour. So I, I hung out with a local parkour uh, group and I learned from them and I wrote this book set in a part of this city that I love. Now my children, they were growing up through all of this. They had their mom who was a writer, their mom who always had her head in a story. And my kids have always influenced me in many ways. I mean, they, they surprise me, I adore them, they inspire me. But of course, you know, as a mom, they've, they've you know, their lives uh, give me ideas too. So I decided to write a picture book called Itty Bitty Bits. And even though my daughter was, was quite grown by this time, my eldest daughter, it was inspired by remembering her when she was a little girl, when she was five years old and she wanted to have her friend Yen come for a sleepover, but her room was so messy, I said, no, not until you clean up your room. And that's when she said, not fair. <laughs> 
I want Yen to come for a sleepover. Anyway, this is a story about how you can get anything done if you do it itty bitty bit by itty bitty bit, which is was kind of my mantra for a long time too. I made that my new mantra. And then my, my youngest daughter was really into horses and we ended up with a horse, an amazing horse named Wager, Wager the Wonder Horse. And so we wrote a story called Wonder Horse. This is a story that deals a little bit with, with bullying and horses. A few years later, I discovered a little something about my Icelandic heritage, my family's Icelandic heritage. There's, you know, just a bit of it, but there's some really interesting stories. And, and I began to explore that when I set a story just north of Winnipeg called Forgetting How to Breathe, which is about two kids in foster care, but it's set in this really interesting community. And so that was really fun to write. And then my most recent book, You Don't Have to Die in the End. This took me 10 years to write. This is set in the North Rockies. Uh, and it is about a, a troubled teen with a tragic past um, who's got to address that past before she's able to move forward. So that's a little bit of my journey through writing. You know, books have, have given me so much. I love traveling around. It's been such a treat to travel to these interesting areas, to research these fascinating areas. I have managed through writing to continue learning my entire adult life. And I love talking to you guys. You know, you inspire me. You make me want to write more stories, better stories. And you give me ideas for, for things that I'd like to write about. But it's also opened up my world in so many more ways. Yeah, there is the traveling. But it's also given this lifelong shy girl a voice. Through writing, I can explore these ideas a lot more deeply than what maybe I otherwise would have. <laughs> and I can also say whatever I want without blushing. <laughs>